All right, today we're going to cover computing volume with integrals. So the idea here is that if we have some shape uh, whose cross sections change as we go through the shape, some sort of weird three-dimensional shape, and we want to compute the volume, um, one way you could estimate it is that you could take cross sections with a certain thickness, say like you know like an inch thick, and you know take whatever cross section it is, compute the area of the top. Since each one of these will be approximately prisms, you can just do the area times the thickness, and then we'll add all these volumes up. Since area is changing um, as you go through, you can think of this as a function of x, maybe. And so if we can, then we'll have this area given by a function of x, a of x. And the thickness, we, if we always use the same one, we can call delta x. So we can essentially set this up like a Riemann sum. And then if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, we'll end up with uh, an integral. And this should be the exact volume if we're able to write the area of the cross sections as a function of x. And so what we're thinking of is this, this sort of shape sort of scanning through the whole shape. And at each value of x, we're going to take the area uh, with respect to x. All right, so this is the formula we're using. Okay, so let's remember that. So the whole idea in the end is that if we can get a function that tells us the area at each cross section, then we'll be able to compute the volume. Okay. So in this example, <clears throat> we want to compute the volume of a jump ramp. Uh, so I've drawn a picture kind of of what it looks like. So a jump ramp has a rectangular base of two by four. So this width is two and this width is four. Um, with rectangular cross sections. And so that's going to be, that's telling us that at each, you know, x value here, if I took a cross section, it would be a rectangle. And those getting taller and shorter is what makes the ramp go from low to high. The height of the ramp is given by the function y equals 1 fifth x squared, where x is the number of feet from the beginning of the ramp. So I'm putting the beginning of the ramp at zero just so I can use the function. Uh, as it is, so the function, so I'm going to draw it, kind of goes through this profile is one fifth x squared, and that's given in feet. Okay, so what do we need here? So we're all the cross sections are rectangles, so remember the area of a rectangle is length times width, and so this cross section. Well, we know the ramp's always two feet wide, so we know the base of this is always two feet. So what we need in order to compute this area function, this is what we're looking for, is the height of this. And the height's going to change for each value of x. But we know that if we're x feet away from the beginning, which is zero, uh, the height is one-fifth x squared. So the height of each one of these is one-fifth x squared. And so at each value of x, so I'm going to write for each x over here, we have this. And so the area is just going to be base times height, so 2 times 1 fifth x squared. Or if we simplify this a little bit, 2 fifths x squared. So that's the function we're taking the integral of. So our volume is going to be the integral of 2 fifths x squared dx. The only question is what are our bounds? And we have it starting at zero, and where do we end? Well, we know we end at four because it's four feet long. <clears throat> okay, so now we just take the integral and plug these values in. So I'm going to pull the two fifths out. I'm going to take the antiderivative. I'm actually going to pull this one third out too, so I get two over 15. And now let's plug in the values. So four cubed minus zero cubed. So the nice thing about starting at zero is that this will cancel. And so I get two fifths times uh, 64, which will give me uh, over 15, sorry, which will give me 128 over 15. And this will be measured in feet cubed because we have volume.